So we've diffused the bomb. Now, how do we get to the secret face? We should definitely go take a look in bomb.s. Where is this called from? Oh, it's called inside of phase diffused. So we need to set a, a breakpoint for phase diffused. So we've at this point made it into the phase diffused function after solving all six phases. Um, and there's a comparison being made here that's six to the number of input strings. So I feel like we're going to be able to um, get past that to the point where we have moved these values 402619 into ESI. Okay, so we're looking for two integers and then a string 603870. Well, that's our input for phase four. So they want a string to come in that. Um, we didn't put a string this time, so we're not gonna get past that. So if we have some text in there, we'll get down to this 401604, and then it moves 402622 into ESI and calls strings not equal, 402622. Okay, so mine says Dr. Evil, yours might not. Let's go ahead and run it again. Okay, so now instead of putting in the original answer that we had for phase four, which we still need in order to get through phase four, uh, we need to put in the text that we found it inside of the phase diffuse in order to be able to get to the secret phase. We should be able to get to the secret phase now, I think. We should at least be able to get past the call to strings not equal and the jump if not equal. So let's check at 401.617. Yeah, we got there. We are putting something into a call to put string twice. So 402.4.F8. Versus you found the secret phase. 402, 520. But finding it and solving it are quite different. We move zero into EAX and call the secret phase. Well, we already have a breakpoint set. Let's go for it. All right, so it's gonna call something to read the line, and then we'll move 10 into EDX and zero into ESI. So jump below or equal, that jumps over the call to explode bomb. String to long. So whatever our number is, we want it to be less than three E8. And then we're calling fun seven. We want the output from the secret phase fun seven to be two. Yeah, so there's almost 16,000 numbers this one could be. We're going to need to dive inside the function to find it. So let's set a breakpoint for fun seven. Let's try something simple like 21. Okay, well, we got to function seven. Let's take a look at what's in our registers. So we were testing our DI. Our DI is this 6030F0. So if we go check out what that is. So that first one's 36 or OX24. And then eight plus that is uh, another address, 603110, node 21. That's an eight. So we have nodes here. So this shows a better version of the place where I found this tree. This address up here is the same place that I found inside of the secret phase as an input to function seven. We're starting at N1, 
which has the value associated with 24. And it seems to have a left address and a right address. That left address is N21. The right address is N22. The left address for N21 is 603190. 603190 is a six and can be found at N31. The right hand side for this is found at 603150, which is N32. The left address for N22 is found at 603170, which is N33. Let's presume that we have N44 in its right hand address, and we do. N31 has 6031 F0 as its left hand address, which is N41. And then the right hand address for this is N42. The left hand address for N32 is N43. And then we have N44, N45, N46, N47, and N48. So what does this mean? When we are going to try to get a two out of this function seven, uh, it does seem to be traversing this tree. So when we are checking to see if this is equal, um, what it really means is that there's no new node to go to. So that's why it's going to jump down to 401, 238. It is returning negative one node not found. This is great for us because that means that there is a fixed number of possibilities that we can put in, which is a lot better than our initial estimate. But it does mean that we need to pay closer attention to what it returns if it does find a node. So it is going to turn edx into the value at that node. The first check is to see if we're less than or equal to, and if that happens, then we jump down to 220. We move zero into EAX. So say if we input 24, we'd have uh, EAX that was zero. We compare ESI to EDX. So if they were exactly the same, we jump if equal to 4123D. Okay, so we end the function if they're exactly equal. So 24 is not going to give us an output of 2. If we didn't jump because we weren't less than or equal to, we'd be greater than. We'd call the function again, pointing to a new node. Say that we did do 32. Um, we would add EAX plus EAX. All right, but at that point, why does that help us? We still have zero in EAX, even if we found it at 32. So if we were less than, we jump over the call to fung zero. We'd move zero into EAX. Um, we didn't jump if equal. We'd traverse the left-hand side and then call function seven again, adding one to EAX. All right, so our potential projections, we either want to go down the left-hand path and then down the right-hand path, or we want to go down the right-hand path and then down the left-hand path, or we could travel the left-hand path twice. One six, it's really not 16, it's 22. Yeah, diffuse the secret phase. And there you have it. Secret phase diffused. Thanks for watching.